Kia ora and welcome to Lesson 3 of the Words of Chemistry in this Chemistry in 48 Hour series. So we're going to use the simple ions we learned last time and use them to write formulae. So let's revise terms. What is an element? It's a substance that can't be broken down further. An atom is the smallest particle that represents an element. An ion is an atom that's positively or negatively charged. And a compound is a substance made up of two or more elements. And it could be in either in terms of atoms or ions. So, ionic compound. It's when the compound is made up of two or more elements in the form of ions. So, cations and anions. Overall, an ionic compound has to be neutral. So, the total positive charge must equal the total negative charge. So, if I have a cation with a charge of plus one and meeting an anion with a charge of minus 1. If I add the total charge, I get a total of 0. If I had a cation of a charge of plus 2, meeting a pink one with a minus 1 charge, can you see I do not have a total equal to 0, which means I need another anion, and that will give me plus 2, plus 2 times minus 1, an overall charge of zero. So potassium iodide is an example of a real um, compound. Potassium has a charge of plus one, iodide a charge of minus one. I'm going to need one potassium ion to every iodide ion. So the formula is Ki. We don't write the charges, notice that, and we, because they cancel out, so overall there is no overall charge, and of course we don't write the ones. So here's another example of calcium iodide, where calcium has a um, charge of plus two. You're going to need two iodides to make an overall charge equal to zero. So again, CaI2 does not show any charges because it is neutral. And we don't write the one after calcium because we never write ones. But we do have to write the two for the iodine or the iodide because I need two iodide ions for every one calcium. So pause the video while you practice by writing down the correct formula. Here are the answers. I hope you got these correct and I'm sure you have. Some more um, practice on using ratios that are not 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 2. If I have aluminium oxide, we've looked at this before, but this time we're looking at the overall charge. You can see if I only have one aluminium to one oxide, I'm going to have a positive charge of plus 1. If I have two oxides, I'll have a charge of minus 1 overall. So I have to keep on adding until I have a balanced charge or a neutral charge of equal to 0. And this means I've got two aluminium ions for every three oxide ions. So my formula is Al2O3. And there's a bit about the ratio. Here's a quick summary of all the um, simple ions you learned in the last lesson. It looks like a lot, but remember to use the um, group numbers. So the only ones you really have to learn off by heart are those four. The iron um, it is given because it's got variable valency. You'd see it either as iron 2 or iron 3. So pause the video and see if you can write the formula of the following compounds. Here are the answers. I hope you got them right. FeCl2, Ag2O, Al-I3, Na2S, and ZnBr2. Again, you don't want to draw all these balancing charges and sums, so we can use the swap and drop method again. So take the charge and drop it down to the other one, and so we'll have Al2O3, and that is my formula. The same thing with hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen group 1, a charge of 1, it drops down to sulfur. The sulfide's charge goes down to hydrogen, giving me a formula of H2S. Again, we never write the one. Here are some more. I've done it in a little bit more detail because we always have to have the simplest ratio. So 
Ca2O2 is incorrect. You have to simplify it down to 1 is to 1, and that gives you CaO. And I've done the same thing with this. It comes to exactly the same barium sulfide as BAS. Pause the video and use the swap and drop method. Can you write the formulae? Here are the answers. ALBR3, uh, AL and I'm just going to have them highlighted there. And I'm sure you've got them right. Finally, time for tips. So if you're typing formulae, you must make sure you use the superscripts for the charges and the subscripts for the ratios. That's really important. If you don't, it's wrong. So as an example, Word 7, a program I use, if you use control equals, it will drop it down to a subscript. And a control shift equals or control plus will make it go as a superscript. And ending off with the joke. It's 1-1 one, one was an iron, 2-2 two, two was 1-2, one, 1-1 one, one joined 2-2, two, two, forming 1-1-2-2-2. Two, two, two. Goodbye. See you in the next lesson.